As a woman owning your own law practice, you know that you wear many hats. You know that getting a steady stream of great clients is job one for any business owner. One of the most daunting aspects of your job is how to get noticed in a very crowded legal marketplace. After all, there are more than 1.3 million lawyers in the United States. So how does a client find you? Hi, I'm Sharon Christie, founder and CEO of Bold Women Lawyers and author of the Bold Women Lawyers Solo Success Guide. Now, I love women lawyers who own their own law firms. They're smart, they're hardworking, and they're bold enough to step out on their own. They are not daunted by much, but what I hear consistently from women business owners in law is that they are daunted by marketing. They don't know where to start. They don't know where to go to get help. They're really unsure of what they're doing and they usually just want somebody else to do it for them. I completely understand that feeling because that was me 16 years ago when I opened my own solo practice. I knew that I needed clients. I just didn't know how to reach out and get them. I didn't know how to get found in the crowded legal marketplace. Now, over the years, I've learned a lot about marketing and been able to develop a great system to get a constant stream of great clients into my law practice. And I've learned a lot along the way. So here's one of the things that I've learned. I've learned that you can spend a lot of money on what I'm going to call client finding services. Now, we all know what this is. We all get the emails and the phone calls and the text messages from, I'll call it ABC company. An ABC company promises to give you a steady stream of qualified clients. They, they explain to you how they're going to do this SEO optimization and drive great clients right to your front door. You're not going to have to do anything. And boy, it sounds so enticing. You just pay the bill and the clients come pouring in the door, or at least that's what you're led to believe. Now, I can tell you from personal experience, but also from the experience of so many other lawyers that I know, that these services will result in your phone ringing or your email inbox filling up. You will get that result. The problem is, in my experience, you get a lot of calls or messages from many people who don't have a case and will never have a case. And it becomes very frustrating because you are paying a lot for this service. You are getting the calls, but it's just not turning into clients and therefore not turning into money and profit for your law firm. So what can you do yourself to stand out in this crowded marketplace? Well, it all begins with your ideal client. Now, I will tell you that that person is different for every type of law practice, for every specialty. But you need to start with who is my ideal client? Who is she? What is her legal problem? What is keeping her up at night? What thoughts, what concerns is she worried about that are literally begging for answers, but she doesn't know what the answers are and she doesn't know where to turn? What are the biggest questions she has about her legal problem? And how do you solve that problem? So that's your first step. You have to figure that out. Once you've figured it out, now you have to reach out to her. And that involves learning, researching, and figuring out where she hangs out. Now, now, I say hangs out in quotation marks. You'll hear that a lot when you read about marketing. Where does your ideal client hang out? What that really means is where can you make a connection with your ideal client? The great news is that we have social media and lots of different places on social media 
that are completely accessible and may well be where your ideal client is hanging out. So you have to research. Is she on Facebook? Is she on Twitter? How about Instagram? Does she use YouTube? How about TikTok? Is she on LinkedIn? What about Clubhouse? There are many different ways that you can find people, but you have to figure out where is she most likely to be. And it's gonna, it will be on one or more of these social media platforms for sure. Now, once you figure that out, then your next step is how do you reach out to her? But the great news for you is that these social media platforms are as available to you as a solo or small law firm practice as they are to the biggest law firm in the world. So that really evens the playing field for you. Now, now once you figured out where she's likely to be hanging out, now you have to go a little deeper. So you need to figure out how am I going to answer her questions? So one of the things that you can do um, is to provide information. What you don't wanna do, and I'm sure you wouldn't, is to just start getting on these platforms saying, okay, hire me, hire me, I'm great. That's not going to be helpful. You need to be able to provide education and answer her questions. So this sounds probably very daunting, like, oh, this is so much work, but think about it. How hard is it for you to shoot a video on your phone? You probably do it in a social setting all the time. It's not difficult. You can do it. it even I learned how to do it, and I'm not great at technical things, but I learned how to shoot videos on my phone. And I was shocked at how easy it really turned out to be. So if I can do it, believe me, you can do it too. You can shoot a video on your phone and post it, post it to a social media platform. You can write an article or a blog post that addresses her concerns. Now, let me caution you. When I say write an article, I don't mean a legal brief. I don't mean an article with proper legal citations. You need to write in layman's terms. And I always think, it, think about it in terms of what's the conversation I have with new clients that, to answer their questions? What are the questions they most frequently ask me? And how do I answer them in layman's terms so that they can understand what the process is for what I do, which is disability cases? How do I, how do I break that down into small chunks that are easily digestible from, for somebody who's not a lawyer. That's exactly what you want to do. You want to provide information that addresses your ideal client's most pressing legal questions or legal concerns, even though they may not frame them in terms of legal questions or legal concerns. You want to answer those questions. You can join groups on Facebook or LinkedIn that are related to the questions that they have. And I'll give you an example. Um, I'm a disability lawyer and uh, I represent a lot of people with multiple sclerosis. And so on uh, Facebook, there are groups for people who suffer from multiple sclerosis. They have lots of questions. And so I'm able to join and provide information about the disability process and how that works and answer those specific questions. Now, I'm not saying, you know, flashing a sign, hire me, hire me. I'm not doing that because what I want to do is establish a relationship with the people I'm interacting with so that they come to see that, oh, Sharon's a go-to person for disability questions. And then I get the contact offline. So I've been able to get lots of clients that way, um, but I'm providing information for many, many more people. It's a matter of education. Education is the key, in my opinion. Once you know who your ideal client is and what's keeping her up at night, and then you start to address those concerns, you are going to become a trusted advisor. You are going to become someone who is known in that particular area for the clients that you serve. You will be the person that your potential clients feel like you are speaking directly to them you are answering their questions directly. And they're gonna think, wow, she knows exactly what I'm thinking. I need to talk to that lawyer. And your phone starts ringing. So you want to remember 
make it simple, answer the questions, answer the questions that you know they have in their head, the concerns that they have about whatever their legal problem is, and how you're able to help them solve that problem. This does not require a huge marketing budget, but it does require an investment of time. You have to research lots of details about your ideal client or your best possible client and who she is, where she hangs out, and then consistently provide information, addressing those concerns and those questions. And when I say consistently, I, I mean at least on a weekly basis, if not more frequently than that. That's something you can start doing today. This is one of the key factors in a successful law practice. There are several others to having a thriving solo or small firm practice. So if you're ready for a six figure plus thriving law practice, go to my website at boldwomenlawyers.com and download my solo success guide. You're gonna learn a lot in there. Some examples of some of the things I talk about are why women have so much trouble engaging clients, engaging the right clients, and how that can hurt you financially, how to set up a system like I did that provides a steady stream of great clients coming to your law practice, how to get out from underdoing all the administrative work that is detracting from your ability to grow your practice and bring in those great clients. That's there and a lot more. If you already know that you're ready to go deeper into your practice, to evaluate your practice, and to learn how to solve your biggest problems, then a VIP law practice intensive may be what you're looking for. So go to my website at boldwomenlawyers.com, book a discovery call, and let's talk about how we might be able to work together to create the law practice of your dreams. Boldwomenlawyers.com, go there now, get your guide or book your discovery call. I look forward to hearing from you and be sure to come back here next week for your next practice tip.